Um, here in Dazani, you're head of India Equity Research at Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Um, do you think India is the new China? Yeah, I think India is going to be one of the fastest growing economy over the next 20, 30 years among all the large economies of the world, predominantly driven by the demographic advantage which India has. It's one of the youngest populations, uh, lowest working age uh, as a percentage of total uh, population ratio. And uh, so that's where I think India's growth prospects over the next 20, 30 years are quite strong. Where it will be different from China is that China had a predominantly exports-led growth or external economies-led growth, whereas India's growth is much more driven by domestic factors, domestic consumption, domestic infrastructure. And uh, to that extent, India's growth profile would be somewhat different than, than China. But yes, a, by all projections, uh, India is one of the fastest growing or likely to be one of the fastest growing economies for next so many years. A big topic was the demonetization. Um, now the recent GDP numbers were pretty good, better than expected. Do you trust these numbers and what do you, what do you expect? Uh, when will, will uh, markets be hit by this reform? Sure. So demonetization, you have to look at it in several aspects. One was what was the objective, what has been achieved uh, and what was the intention. The intention was to reduce the stock of black money. Intention, in, intention was also to improve the tax compliance. And uh, we believe that although the stock of black money has not been reduced because every everybody has put the money back into the system, uh, the tax compliance, there is, a, there is a, a serious possibility that over a period of next few quarters and years, Uh, because of this strong signal by the government, the tax compliance will go up because of demonetization. And uh, the tax compliance going up will have seriously positive implications for fiscal deficit, for interest rates and for other macro variables. So yes, it did lead to a short term economic slowdown. Uh, we believe that the bulk of the slowdown is behind us in the December quarter. And with every passing month, things are improving on the ground. Uh, over the next six months, people will stop talking about demonetization on impact of economic growth. Uh, there will be some slowdown in the economic growth in the December and March quarter, but I think it's far better than what was being feared in the month of November, December. So uh, yes, there is a temporary setback to growth, but it has much better longer term implications as well. So what do you think, which businesses would, would be the, 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 the one the most profit from, from this reform? So there are quite a few businesses in India which where organized sector compete with unorganized sector. And unorganized sector, there is also or what they call informal economy in India. Uh, many of the informal economy businesses are having their advantage because they are somehow avoiding paying taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, because of demonetization as well as because of goods and services tax reform, which is being rolled out from July 17, increasingly it is becoming more and more difficult for businesses to avoid paying taxes. Overall tax compliance will go up. So a business which is competing with unorganized sector, uh, where they were losing competitive advantage because somebody else was not paying taxes, but you are paying taxes. Those businesses will benefit a lot because of this move, because overall the economy will be more formalized over a period of time. So there are quite a few industries such as building materials, such as some of the consumer discretionary uh, 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 categories, uh, electrical appliances, you know, quite a few consumer related categories where the businesses are competing with unorganized sector and those those businesses will benefit from this whole formalization of economy. Um, you also manage a, a fund on in Indian equities. Um, which are the, the sectors you are most uh, positive at the moment? Yeah, so I am heading the India equity research team and uh, uh, the currently the portfolio uh, of the India equity portfolio of Goldman Sachs Uh, we are positive on domestic oriented sectors such as financials, such as uh, industrials, uh, 
uh, consumer and uh, construction materials like cement and uh, we are we have been positive on most of these sectors for over a period of now 3 to 4 years and there are also many swiss companies doing business in india for example nestle or uh, abb um are you also very confident for their business or are they a diff different uh, kind of uh, business model so the companies which you mentioned are 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 leaders in their respective segments and they have they have done a great job over a period of time they are very respected names in india uh, uh um, nestle is almost like a household name uh in 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 their in their in their categories so i think uh, they are going to benefit in line with the other companies uh from india's economic growth and mm -hmm. okay. um, let's talk about the the broader stock market in india um the sensex is pretty close to an all time high but at the same time valu valuations are pretty uh, expensive compared to other um emerging markets uh, how much potential or do you think there is still potential in the market so first of all we believe that india's valuations compared to other emerging markets always remain expensive because of two or three reasons one is that the state owned enterprises are much lower proportion of the market cap in india compared to the other geographies uh, typically state owned enterprises do trade at a lower multiples compared to the private companies uh, there is also much greater sectoral diversification which india offers and uh, there is also higher return on capital or higher return on equity of indian corporates which translates into structurally higher earnings growth so that's why indian market multiples are always at an expensive multiple or re relatively higher multiples than the broader emerging markets so we believe that india's multiple should be compared more to its own history rather than let's say absolute levels vis-a-vis -vis the emerging market if you look at india's current Uh, stock market multiples at about 16 and a half times one year forward multiple based on the consensus numbers those are broadly i would say in line with the longer term average multiples for indian market and uh, we believe that corporate earnings growth is what should drive the returns from the indian market going forward so india has a period of almost 3 years of uh, uh, stagnant corporate earnings growth and now we are seeing early signs of recovery in the corporate earnings so going forward market returns would be more driven by the corporate earnings recovery and corporate earnings growth so india still attractive for in for investors we believe that uh, structurally it is one of the best uh, emerging markets to be in uh, because of the reasons which we discussed earlier and from the valuation point of view you are looking at a market where uh, you are getting Corp uh, corporate earnings growth recovery and you are looking at early cycle corporate earnings growth and average multiples so it it is an attractive proposition